So today we have a video about scammers, particularly those that go after men who are lonely. And I don't know about you guys, but I got a few of these things in my closet. I've realized. <laughs> so I'm going to share that at the end. But in the meantime, enjoy my laptop camera going bright and dark and bright and dark <laughs> throughout this video as we watch it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. The day she was supposed to leave to come see me here in Ohio, she sent me a picture of her Baby. in the hospital. <gasps> in Look total, I have sent Vivian. She ain't going nowhere. When she's all busted up like that, guys, she can't come visit you. Look at her. She's in the hospital. How dare you even suggest she try to get it together to get over there? You want her to get there when she's got all that crap all over her face? Wow. Such a rude guy. Close to or over $25,000. On today's episode... We help a man named David with his online relationship with a woman he met on Facebook named Vivian. See, that's his first problem. He found her on Facebook, guys. Never date anybody off of Facebook. It's not what it's for. It's to play Farmville. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know. Do they still play Farmville on Facebook? Is that even a thing? It's like from 15 years ago. The two have been in communication for years and just have never met in person. David has spent thousands of dollars on just plane tickets, but some way or another, Vivian never gets the chance to board the plane. Something just always seems to get in the way, and David has come to us to verify her true identity. I it's the fact that those plane tickets aren't somewhere warm. He's probably sending her up north. He used to be like, hey, babe, we're going to Cuba. We're going to Mexico. <laughs> we're going to Cancun, babe. It's like, yeah. Then she'd arrive. She'd be there. After sending $25,000 to her, he is madly in love and desperately needs answers. Hey, uh, my name's Dave. I'm 55 years old. I am a registered nurse. I'm also a uh, licensed paramedic. I, I got a lot of different hobbies. Uh, I've been playing guitar since I was 10 years old. I've been in a lot of bands over the years, but mostly never really went anywhere. It was kind of more for fun and like playing out like at local bars and stuff like that. I've been married and divorced two times. It's like most people who are in a band because it doesn't work out. It's rough life, man, being in a band. It's hard. Um, first time I got married, I was 21 years old. We're not like enemies or anything, I, but I haven't talked to her probably in 25 years. So the second marriage uh, was when I was about 30, and uh, I had I have a 24 year old son with her. And again, we were married about five years. Long story short, the one night um, it was like three, four in the morning, and the bars were closed by then. So I'm like, okay. Uh, but I just had a gut feeling she might be at her dad's house because he was out of town and I drove over there. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. You know what's going to be, guys. You know what it's going to be. At like three in the morning and her car was there and, and I caught her naked with another guy. So like in the act. And, Surprise! Uh, dramatic. After two failed marriages, David was left feeling lonely. He was contacted by a woman named Vivian through Facebook Messenger. And this is where it all began. He was contacted by a woman named Vivian. Do you think a woman like that is going to contact a guy like this? Like, she's whatever, in her 20s, right? And she's reaching out to a guy who's like in his 50s. And you just be like, totally normal. Of course she's reaching out. Like, hey, smiley. She has no motive there. I mean, it, <laughs> it's like the first... The first sign, if it was you reaching out to her and you had to like work your way in, I would give it a little more credit. This person just randomly popped up on Messenger through Facebook, you know, and that's how this all got started. Yes, so I randomly. wasn't like looking or trying to date or anything. I'm just messaging you to say hi. Just, just hi. Oh. Please message back. Please! Vivian is 
31 years old. So she's about 5'8". Um, she has long brown hair. I can't, I can't ever get a date. Just look at me. No one wants to date me. Look, look, he's, with these, these big ass lips. No one wants to kiss those. And these, these big eyes. Oh my God. Oh God, I'm so ugly. I need to go for this 50 some year old man. No one will ever date me. Bluish, brownish eyes. Fairly thin, fairly athletic looking. Oh, just, just disgusting. Just ugly. Ugh. Ugh. I have vomit in my mouth just looking at her. Yeah, she's very attractive. Uh, Vivian's very kind of outgoing, and uh, I think she's a little bit spoiled. Like, she doesn't get what she wants. Maybe a little impatient, but... What? <laughs> hey, Poppy! Okay, so what is she, like, Mexican or something? Or Colombian? I don't know. Hey, Poppy. And then, like, hey, please talk to me. Oh, yeah, begging for your attention. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's 31 years old, looks like that, and just begs for men's attention because she can't get it anywhere else. I mean, it's not like she could just download any friggin' dating app and end up with, like, 50 million messages within a week. Um, Vivi and I have a few things in common. We both like the outdoors, and she's into music. Uh, I'm a little older than her, but uh, she's into guitar players, so that's one thing that uh, we share in common. That's hilarious. She's into guitar players? It's almost like she looked at your profile and saw you had a guitar, and it was like, hey, I should probably know something about guitar players. I think what I love about her is I like the conversations and stuff. And, you know, I feel like, you know, um, there's someone there in my life. Yep. She calls me Poppy, P-A-P-I. She misses um, you. I, I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> I, I just call her Viv, like V-I-V, or sometimes I'll kind of call her Mom, Mammy, M-A-M-I. But, uh, you know, just getting to know each other. Shouldn't it be a Mommy? What is it, mommy? What is the Spanish thing? The Spanish word like the the opposite of poppy, but for a woman. What? Oh God, I used to know what it is. I can't remember now. Each other and uh, you know, and talking about what each other did for work. And she says that she she's working right now, David. She's working on you, and not in the way that you think. That's your full-time job is messaging people and be like, hey, please talk to me. She works for an investment company, um, and a lot of it revolves around Bitcoin. We we don't really argue much. I mean... <laughs> I feel like that's another sign. Bitcoin investment company. At that point, you should just be like, Bit as soon as they say Bitcoin, just be done. If it's Bitcoin or like gold or any kind of investment company, just any kind of investment company, actually, just be like, I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> but if they like say they're like a nurse and something like that, or, you know, some actual career that's not going to try to take your money or involve you investing in them or so, some business that they own, like they work, I don't know, in an office as a receptionist or something, you're good. You're fine. It's all good. I mean, the only time that we have is when. She'll ask me for some more money or something, and I, I'll, you know, then I, I kind of start getting a little bit uh, pissed off about that. Until the next time, because you forget about the last time she has your money, so then you're like, oh, okay, here's some more. Here's another couple thousand, babe. It's fine. Just take another couple thousand. I mean, what is that to me? Come on. David and Vivian fell for each other fast. He was willing to do anything to make this relationship work even if it required him sending money to make his internet girlfriend happy. Yeah. The first time I sent money to Vivian was about a month into our talking online, and I believe it was just a couple gift cards for, like, Apple. Yeah, the, my Apple subscription. I mean, that Apple TV, it, it costs, like, so much. Isn't it, like, isn't it, like, 110 or $120 a year or something like that? Or, like, 99 $9.99? for a yearly subscription. I mean, I mean, that's kind of expensive, right? Like if you're a student or something, 
So you maybe need like a hundred bucks or something. She said she needed to pay her Apple subscription. So it's like three hundred dollars or something like that. Yeah. Um, two ninety nine. Um, no. <laughs> Why is it two ninety nine? Why did she just ask for three hundred? Like, wow. It doesn't. It doesn't seem as much if it's just ninety nine. Just like the stores. She's doing that whole thing. So you're like, oh, it's just two hundred. Vivian's job being, uh, from what she tells me, in like uh, Bitcoin investing, um, she kind of talked me into investing and having an account with her. Uh, Solid decision. Yeah. Good job, bud. Of course. Um, to where, you know, basically I was sending her um, about a joint, a joint investment account out of all things. So she has access to it. All good. You're like, yeah, I'm going to make money on this account. <laughs> You're already sending your money. And then you open up a joint account with her. Holy shit. I, ugh, okay. Dollars out every two weeks for, for a while this went on. Now, it was always going to... I love how she tells you, the first investment, $2,000. You don't get to make the decision. You can't be like, hey, I'll put on a thousand or five hundred. No, she's like two K. Two K is what you're gonna do. And you're like, Yes. Yes, mammy. <laughs> do her wallet address, which um at one time, I mean she she opened this one account up that had both of our names on it, which I was able to look at. She made it sound to me like most of it was that she was doing the investing herself with it and we were gonna both benefit from the profits of it sometimes uh, the money would be for personal things that she said she needed or wanted to go shopping or something like that so and then uh two other times i i sent money that was supposed to be for airfare for her to come over here but that never happened david and vivian i want to go shopping with my friends please send it at that point you're 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 in so deep when you're sending money, you're just, you're doing it because you feel like, well, one, you're worried if you say no, they're going to leave you and you're like so attached to them and having them around. And you just, you just want that feeling of love. So you're like, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to send it. That's what happens. Never got the chance to meet in person due to unforeseen circumstances. He sent thousands of dollars just on airplane tickets and neither of them ever got on the plane. The first time that Vivian and I were supposed to meet was actually me. I bought a, a ticket to Switzerland, and that would have been in December of like 2020. And um, I was all set to go. It was like the day after Christmas I was supposed to leave. And about four days before that date arrived that I was supposed to leave, I didn't hear from her, which was unusual. She doesn't want you to come. So she's like, how can I get him not to not to come? Make some excuse, don't answer. And then uh, the day before, it was actually the day before Christmas, she sent me a picture of her in a hospital. So I ended up not going to Switzerland. If she's in the hospital, wouldn't you want to go to look after her or like to help her? Or she's obviously going to make some kind of excuse, like, why you wouldn't want to do that. But I'm like, that's not really... I feel like in, in that kind of case, if you actually do... Let's say you really are... Like, you love this person, they love you. Why wouldn't you just go? So, so it, like, your instinct would be to go. At least in my case, it would be to go. It's just, it's just weird. And, yeah, she's got the shit on her face, but actually, if you look at it... She does not look injured, and she has freaking makeup on. Like, seriously, it just looks like someone stuck some tape on her and, like, some crap, but, like, like, what did she get, plastic surgery? <laughs> like, what did she say? I was in a car crash? You look like, you don't look like anything bad happened. You look like, maybe your hair's messed up. That's the worst. <laughs> you look perfectly fine. And because she said she was under quarantine. This was um, under quarantine for what? Was this COVID? 
Why does she have all the, what? Why does she have this on her face? Okay, whatever. I don't know. Okay, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. It just seems all... It, the whole thing is suspicious, so I don't even know why I was going to say this seems a little suspicious. <laughs> the whole thing was suspicious from the start. <laughs> from, hello, please talk to me. <laughs> was that, from this hot woman, of course it's suspicious. Like a year later, and... Um, the day she was supposed to leave to come see me here in Ohio, she said her best friend's mother just died and she can't travel now under these conditions. So That's right, because you guys have only been planning it for a year. You've only spent a whole bunch of money on this and she can't, like her friends and those people are way more important to her than you are. So you should automatically take that as a sign that she doesn't care about you as much as you care about her. Because I'm sure if his best friend, mother, passed away or something like that, he 100% would go. And then he just makes excuses for her. Well, I guess it's okay. I guess it makes sense to type, you know, you know, she is really close with her friend. It's okay. Like, and I, I'm not that important. That's, that's okay. Like, they come first. All along the way, you were just making excuses and excuses. Every time she shows her true colors, you make more and more and more excuses to cover it so that you stay in this relationship. I think that David knows this woman's a scammer and he doesn't care. Like deep down, he knows, but he does not care. He just likes the fact that he's talking to somebody on the phone or it seems like the talk on the phone like voice and texting and it feels like somebody's in his life and they feel and that he's loved and he's supported and then the third time was um on my birthday of last year basically uh it just got down to where um she said that something had happened at work and uh she wasn't going to be able to travel and uh, she would explain it to me later. So it was kind of a vague uh, reason. Um, I didn't get any real details from that one. So I, I was uh, really. So even the third time, David, the third time she gave you basically no answer. Because I, I would think at this point, the scammer is probably like, oh, I've already like pushed this guy multiple times. I'm kind of running this this thin, like I'm walking on thin ice here. Like he's going to think something's up. So she's probably ready to let it just slide away. You know, she's gotten some money. I'm just going to let it slide away because how much more am I really going to get from this guy? Like seriously. So she's even that and he's still talking to her hurt each time actually big, big time because i was like man i was really excited to meet her and three times uh, she let me down and i mean i i don't you know it was, it was pretty crushing actually david still has hope that he'll meet vivian in person so they can begin their new life together in total i have sent vivian close to or over twenty five thousand dollars and I'm like on the fence with like if she's real or not real. I, 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 I don't know. You know, twenty-five thousand dollars. I don't know if I believe him. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he might be underplaying it because it seems to have been multiple years. Twenty-five thousand over like three years or something. Like it, it feels like it's three years. I don't, I, I don't know if they said that. Okay, they, the title says four years. So okay, let's just assume that they were talking for three years at this point. Let me put 25,000 or even four years. That's not that bad. Because you, if you think about it, split it up into all the different months of the year, right? So 12 months in a year. Basically, it's like $500 a month. It's not that bad. It could be a lot worse. I mean, it, it is special to me because we talk a lot, um, you know, and I, I feel like, you know, there's someone there for me and, uh, you know, um, I want it to go to the next level. If Vivian was real and uh, you guys are able to help me discover that, I would be, I would be overjoyed and it, it would definitely make me feel like, uh, 
you know, it would just validate, um, you know, that all the time and what I put into this with her is, wasn't just for nothing. You can feel how it's when he's talking, he's dejected. And it feels to me like when I listen to him, he's sitting there like, oh, I'm pretty sure this is fake. Like he's thinking this is fake. This is fake. And he's just hoping, please let it not be fake. Fake. So I, I'm just not sitting there like an idiot. Like, oh my god, like I can't believe I did this. That's where he's at. It was now time to give David the truth. David, how's it going? Excellent. Okay. Well, are you ready for today? Uh, I was just uh, hoping to no. uh, find out if this person I've been talking to is uh, really where she says she is, and if she's uh, who. Like, like the pictures that I've received from her, if, if that's really her. What is she asking you for for right now? Is she Does she need money? Is is there some other story that's going on? She called me um, to log into my Netflix. And uh, when she logged in, I got an email and it, it said that the location was somewhere in Nigeria. So after logging into your Netflix and seeing that you know, someone logged in from Nigeria. That was why. Why would they do that? It's so stupid. Like, okay, this the scammer might be good at like taking advantage of gullible guys, but it seems really dumb in sort of technology. They always have that double authentication where it's like if you don't sign in from your from an expected location, so the location you usually sign in from, like your your current city or something. Pretty much all these services send an email saying, like, hey, this person's logging in from this device in this area or whatever. Like, how do you not know this? You said you were in Sweden or something, and then it's just like, uh, why does it say someone's logging in from Nigeria? Did you give your password to somebody else? No. <laughs> he gave it to you, his login and password. And you tried to log in, and it's Nigeria, dummy. Didn't even use a VPN? Like, it's like basic. Wasn't a red flag to you? Oh, it was huge because I confronted her and she told me that someone has hacked her phone or she's been hacked or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hacked my phone. My phone got hacked, guys. I, some Nigerian hacked it. I don't know. It just so happens at the exact time you gave it to me and all the stuff, somebody hacked my phone. It's just. I mean, we probably lost all our bitcoins as well in the wallet. I mean, probably took everything. It's all gone. Sorry. That was her reply to me. Even after finding out someone logged into David's Netflix account from Nigeria, he still stays in contact with Vivian. We were still confident in everything we had planned for our meeting. We had to get David to see what was really going on. Yeah, and I, I never one time have talked to her on video. Um, every time she said there was a problem, like her phone was in Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, 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 okay. I got my own story. Encrypted or the video wouldn't work on it. So I, I've never even seen her. I've only heard her voice. I've never seen her talk to me like I'm talking to you guys. So. I, I have no clue what she even looks like other than, you know, the sound of her voice, so. We have all the closure that you need today. Um, the sound of her voice, does she sound like she's Nigerian? <laughs> what does she sound like, David? What does she sound like? Bree and Virginia and this all the search specialists, they've looked into everything, and I'll let them kick it off. The first thing we looked into was the email address that you were using to communicate with Vivian. And we found that it was flagged for possible fraudulent activity. And it also has a pretty high fraud score. Okay. All right. Like her email? Yes. Okay. Her email address scored a 94 out of 100 on the fraud score. Oh. And what that means is people are getting a lot of uh, spam emails and unsolicited emails from her email specifically. I see. Okay. I understand that you've been sending Bitcoin to Vivian? Yeah, I, I haven't lately, you know. I, I stopped doing that when I talked to you guys. He told me to, to stop. So yeah. I'm definitely not sending anything else that way. Oh, when you're oh, oh. 
if he actually sent a message saying I'm a little short on cash right now, babe, give me some time, and then he's literally going out there working whatever it is, like, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, whatever it is, why he doesn't have money, and then sending it to her, like, oh my god, bro. Oh my god, that's that sucks. But then again, I guess he deserves all this because the flags were there and he's just being gullible. But it still feels so bad for him. You were sending Bitcoin. Did you go to like an ATM or um, an app? An ATM. It looks like it's like a little uh, Bitcoin ATM machine. So we did look into the Bitcoin wallets that you were sending money to. Those wallets received over 2,000 transactions and they had over $2 million in deposits. What? She made $2 million? I need to be a freaking scammer. Holy smokes. And they're in Nigeria. The shit. That's got. Like, oh my god. You. Uh, I. But it's not just him, but it's like a bunch of people. That's freaking crazy. This, this can't be one person, though, right? This can't be just one person doing this. Like, there's got to be, like, an organization or something. Like, if it's just one person, like, just stop. You're done. You've got two million. You live in Nigeria. You're done. Cool. Just, well, I guess, actually, why stop? Maybe, maybe it's, you just keep getting more. Like, people are gullible. Like, I don't know. This is, this is, like, what? I don't even know how to process this. Oh my god. Oh wow. I know this graph is probably a little confusing. To make things simple, when David would send money to Vivian, he would go to a Bitcoin ATM. He'd then send the money to Vivian's wallet. Using our Bitcoin tools, we were able to find out that Vivian's wallet had over $2 million in it. All of the money in Vivian's wallet was moved to another wallet under the crypto exchange Nexo. So why do you think that she went through such great lengths to keep all of this money, right? There's 2,000 transactions in this wallet that you're sending money to. Why would she hide $2 million from you? Yeah, I don't, she said it has some kind of court case going on or something. She needs money for her attorney or something. I, I don't know. He is hook, line, and sinkered. Oh my God. He's literally repeating it like, well, she has a court case going on, you know, this court case, she needs two million dollars because, you know, she's got to protect herself, you know, she's, it's like, what? Like, he has, he has taken all the propaganda that she's spewing out at him and just absorbed it and just regurgitating it. I don't know if he believes this anymore, if he's still defending it or what, but... How in the name of God do you do you do this? How do you do this? Like, how do you get this far? And it's like we heard like four or five things that automatically were like red flags or whatever in the first five minutes of this video. And we're like, these are all points. We would be like, this is this is dumb. Should it three times cancel the flight for stupid ass reasons, blah, blah, blah. Asking for money, blah, all these things. And then it's like, oh, I have a court case, blah. Like, what? What? I don't even know what it's about. I never get like the whole story. A lot, and a lot of times she would ask me for grocery, money, or personal... Yeah, this $2 million, I need every penny for that lawyer. I cannot give you any. I, I, I can't even afford to eat. This These lawyers in Nigeria, they're super expensive, okay? It's going to cost me $2 mil just to just to pay him or her. Money, you know, for things like that or to pay bills, you know, that kind of stuff. So. so can you tell us about the photos that you received from her? Um, Every time I send money, I get a photo shortly after. And the more money I sent, the spicier the photo would be. Sometimes I get lingerie shots when I'd say ten, when I'd send a couple thousand. It was great. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, a few times I would ask for a recent photo. And, um, you know, a couple of times I got, 
I got a couple with her in a in a bathing suit, and then I got um, one that was like a normal picture of her like laying on a couch. Um, David received a ton of photos of Vivian. <laughs> Unfortunately, we found every single photo he received on Instagram, along with all of the photos on Vivian's Facebook account on another woman's Instagram account. We were 100% sure that Vivian was lying about her identity. Oh, yeah. You had to get this far to be 100% sure. <laughs> I, oh, my God. I know what you want to hear, and we have exactly that. So the search specialist team, they took some time and, and, and ran some reverse image searches, and they were able to find the real woman in these photos. Really? No kidding. What's the truth? <laughs> Her name is Svetlana. And she's actually a digital creator. She lives in the Czech Republic. Czech Republic? Yes. Okay. All right. We reached out to her. Dude, David, I'm sorry, buddy. You could just see in his face, he's like wrecked. Just look at his face. That's the face of a man whose heart is literally breaking right now. But in one way, it's good because I guess he's getting relief. Like he's he knows the truth now. He can just be like, oh, let it go. We reached out to her, and she's going to get on the call with us today. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Wow. David was about to come face to face with the real woman he thought he was in a relationship with for the past four years. Do you think a romance scam victim meeting the real person in the photos is helpful in them coming to terms? Comment down below. We'd love to hear your opinion. <laughs> David, this is Svetlana. Svetlana, this is David. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Gosh, she even kind of sounds like her. He sent money to someone that obviously stole your... What? Sounds like her. What kind of Nigerian is this? First of all, Czech Republic doesn't sound like Sweden, but I guess you could make up some excuse like, oh, my family moved from whatever... Ukraine or Czech Republic to Sweden and the, that's why we sound like this but anyways whatever unless she's really good at accents I am surprised likeness and here we are okay my name's Dave I'm in USA Ohio and I guess for yeah, two two years almost plus I thought that you know I was in a online relationship with you so you know yeah I heard that story and I'm really sorry for that that's okay, you know, I, I, uh... All she's thinking is like, I would never be in a relationship with you. <laughs> I, okay, I'm being mean. I'm being mean, sorry. I have confirmation now, and I, I feel, I feel relieved, you know, that uh, it's everything, and, you know, I, I hope that you were real, but uh, I guess... <laughs> yeah, yeah I, me, I, I am real, and I'm happy they reach out to me, so... Yeah. Now you can have the relief. I guess it it's not easy for you to find out, but it's better than living yeah. in a lie. Yeah, I'm just curious. How old are you? I'm 28, turning 29 uh, oh. in June. All right. Because this other person told me she was 31, so that's, that's close okay. enough. But uh... no problem. I'm happy to show you that I'm real, and that you don't have to waste your money anymore. <laughs> I think you're obligated to date Dave now, though, Svetlana. I'm sorry, but he's been in love with you for, like, almost three years. I, you're, you guys are basically married now, so um, we're going to put a claim in uh, via the government and uh, Czech Republic that you guys are actually husband and wife now. Uh, he's going to make a common law claim. So, I mean, you can try to fight it, but ultimately you guys are in a relationship now. So I, I just, I don't know if you knew that, but uh, yeah, that's how it is. So good luck. Uh, many kids. Uh, yeah, just tell your boyfriend, uh, sorry. You know, oh, fine. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay. All right, you take care. You too, bye. Thanks a lot, bye. 
Dave, you were supposed to ask her. Do you, would you like to go out? Or are you single? <laughs> Can I have your number? <laughs> Can I call you sometime? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I've been feeling this way for like the last year and a half. You know, that it wasn't real, but I don't know. I, she was, they're good at what they do. You know, I'm telling you. Dave. They're not good. They're not good. The only reason that they got you is because there was something missing in your life. You were in a place in your life that you were gullible to this because you were just missing. You were lonely. You're missing something. You just wanted anything. But they are not good. They made so many mistakes. Or they make so many mistakes. This person who was talking to you made a lot of mistakes. They are good. It's scamming people, so. But, all right. So, what are the next steps for you? Where do you go from here? <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to confront her. I'm going to message her probably after we get off the phone and tell her I need you. To, I want her to call me and I'm going to confront her. And then I'm going to tell her goodbye and I'm blocking her. And it's going to be kind of, it, it's weird because I, I kind of fell in love with the voice, you know, talking to the voice that I was talking to. Uh, if it, as crazy as that sounds. Um, but uh, yeah. So I'm going to confront her and shame on her, you know, and I hope that, uh, I don't know, you know. Are you going to continue to online date, David? Yeah, hell no. <laughs> it was weird. I wasn't even looking to do It's not online dating, bud. He reached, she reached out to you on Facebook and was like, hey, and then says she's whatever. You know the story. Like, it's not... <laughs> It's not online dating. You weren't even trying to date, apparently. Do this. It just she popped up, and I just started chatting, you know. And that's exactly how they do it. You know, they they start talking to you, and then right away, they they it, over within a week, she's you know like acting like we're in a relationship, you know. And I just kind of kept talking to her, and because I wasn't dating anybody, and that's kind of I wasn't even looking for it. It just happened, you know through Facebook. Scammers don't only target men who are looking for love, they also target men who need love. In this case, something about David's Facebook profile singled him out as someone willing to send money. Public information such- He does look like a nice guy. You know, David looks like a nice guy. He looks like a nice dude. He looks like he might be a little gullible. He looks very friendly. Such as divorced or single on your about me or appearing alone in majority of your photos is something a scammer looks for when choosing his next victim. I, I had a feeling that uh, for a long time that it, I was being scammed and people were telling me she's probably not real and I just want to say thank you for helping me prove 100% that um, she wasn't who she said she was. I mean, I, it, it's actually priceless to me. Um, I, I just uh, feel sorry for people that get caught up in this. You know, it's uh, you know they, they take advantage of people, and it's it's a shame. You know. Very true statement, my friend. I was gonna make a joke, but then I was like, you know what? That's a very touching, true statement. I don't think I should make a joke there. Says here, David has made the decision to never online date again, which is weird because he wasn't online dating, just on Facebook. He has chosen to pursue a relationship with a woman in his local community instead. That's smart. We are working with him to hopefully retrieve some of the funds he sent to the fake profile of Svetlana, Vivian. David's next course of action is to file a police report, which will enable us to request KYC. KYC? What the hell is KYC? I don't know what that is. Interesting. I don't know how common this is for other people. Uh, you guys comment down below, please. But I have definitely had run-ins with this. And now that I think about it, like, throughout my whole life, I remember being in my... It was after college. I think I was like 23. And 
I was online dating um, on some dating website. I don't know which one it was. And some woman, uh, I don't know if I contacted her. She reached out to me. But anyway, she started talking, whatever. She Nice profile pictures, all that type of stuff. She says that she's away on a trip. Like she's on some trip somewhere. And she says she's uh, in Nigeria. She does. She's doing something with textiles, with fabrics. So she's like buying fabrics or something. And they're going to bring them back to Canada or something like this. Anyway, so then she's like, oh, I got stuck here. Can you send me some money kind of thing? And I think I was actually kind of like considering it. I remember thinking about it. I ended up asking her like, like uh, I was trying to think about like how I could verify her. Because I was like open to sending her a little bit of money if she was the real person. So I was thinking like how to verify who she was. And I asked her, you know, what animals on our 25 cent coin? She couldn't answer the question. She just said, uh, like, a lizard or something. And I was like, you didn't even, like, try to Google this. Like, you could have tried to Google it. Because I was, like, counting it. I'm like, well, if she takes, you know, three seconds to answer, it's suspect. But if she answers, like, in under a minute or something, like, fairly quickly, then I can be like, oh, it's probably her. Because I would think she would Google it. But she didn't even try to Google it. She took a few minutes and then said a lizard. <laughs> so I was like okay like clearly not from canada i had a lot of run-ins like even after my last relationship i had a bunch of run-ins with uh i run with one woman who was like supposed to meet me in my city uh in calgary was supposed to be like we're supposed to get together she had some issues with her mom so she had to like leave and then i was like hey can we do like a video call while you're at your mom's and she's like yeah, we can do a video call or something. And then it's like, oh, when I call, it's like my camera doesn't work and this type of thing. And then she's like, actually, my mom and I are having trouble. You know, like I'm not able to work here because she was working before. Like when she's up there, like she couldn't work. She had to like lose her job or whatever um, or quit her job. It, it was just like this whole thing. And it was like, hey, can you send some money? I remember that. And then even after I like broke it off with her, she kept trying for like, multiple months she'd like just keep reaching out later and be like hey and i was like no <laughs> i was like stop talking to me and she kept being like oh, i'm gonna come back to calgary i'm gonna come back to calgary and then she's like i'm in toronto i'm like what the <laughs> this is completely other side of the other side of canada this is like dumb <laughs> and then and then she tells me she's like hey um, what if uh, i sent you like naked pictures or uh videos or like uh, sexy videos and stuff like you could buy them for, from me instead instead of me having to make like an OnlyFans account to support myself and I'm like I'm like what <laughs> like what it's <laughs> just like weird like really trying hard there's one from like Taiwan uh, she said oh yeah I'm like moving to your city moving to Calgary like my parents are from from there or whatever I'm just in Taiwan doing something blah 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 have some business and then I, I talked to her for like three weeks and then she talked about some kind of gold investing and she was like I made so much in gold investing in gold or some kind of stock things and I was just like okay so suspicious now I was kind of like leaving her in the back pocket I was like well if she comes here it'd be cool to like hang out with her but I was just kind of talking to her up until that point because I wasn't seeing anybody else like I was still just like online dating like playing the field and uh, then I asked her to do like a video call and she was like, no, I don't want to do a video call. And I was like, why are you too scared to show yourself? Because you're whatever, fake. And then she got all pissed off and like screamed. Maybe I shouldn't have called her fake, but she probably is fake, like 99.9% .9 fake. Anyway, she got all pissed off. I mean, actually, why would you get pissed off unless you were unless you were fake? So obviously you're fake. If you're not fake, you'd be like, no, you just laugh and be like, show yourself. So. Yeah, it's all like there's so much of this. It happens all the time. Um, so, yeah, I think just as not even just as men, but just as people, because I'm sure this happens to women too. Like women get this from some guy. We just all have to be careful about this and make sure that this type of thing doesn't happen to us. Because I'm just thinking about it. Like it's happened to be at least four or five times. It's it's wild. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I did. I thought it was pretty funny.
And on that note, guys, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys, I'm still in the basement. Still here. Going to be here all of October. So, hey, just live in the raging, just living the parent, the parent basement life, apparently. I figure if I drove all this way across the country and it took me like three days to do it, I guess I should stay here for a while, right? Like, it's just weird to be like, I'm here for a week and then leave. It's like, I'll just stay for October, you know? Drive back in the first week in November or something.